Hello and welcome back to the show. This is Everything Under the Sun. My name is Ty, and uh, today, yeah, I'm getting started a little bit later than expected. Had some things come up earlier today. It's almost as if, I don't know, just like everything came up today, but had some friend with uh, uh, some, had a friend with some car troubles and went to help him out. And then I have some car things going on, changing the alternator out in my car. So that's going to be a project for after I get done recording, but just kind of running around and doing a few things today was uh, kind of got things postponed, but finally here recording, happy to be recording and under the circumstances, happy that you're here listening if you're, well, I mean, obviously you have to be listening if you're hearing what I'm saying right now. So there's that, but there's a lot of stuff going on in the world and a lot of stuff going on with uh, each person in the world, obviously dealing with this obvious thing going on, which is the coronavirus, COVID-19, as it is officially known as. So today the topic was supposed to be politics, and it's, uh, when I when I pull a topic from the box, it goes on the wall right in front of where I podcast, so the politics is just kind of like staring at me in the face because I, uh, I'm changing the topic to fear because that is something that is very common right now. A lot of people are feeling a lot of fear and worry about things that are happening because I mean, we don't know what's going to, you know, how next week is going to look because things have been changing and escalating so rapidly in the past two weeks. So, I mean, it's very right to obviously have some concerns or worries about things to come, but it's not necessarily always the best thing for us. So I'm going to get into that in a minute. But with that in mind, with everything going on, that I, uh, that's the reason why I changed the topic to fear from politics. And I mean, I also just didn't want to talk about politics. I mean, it's uh, I'm going to be honest about that. I mean, who wants to talk about politics? Politics is like the person that you didn't really invite to the party, but they show up anyway, and you can't really uninvite them. So you're like, oh, all right, well, I guess I'll I guess I'll guess stick around and listen to you for a little bit. But um, politics is that kind of conversation, although it's something very important, obviously, and something that we should all be discussing in a, in a way that is productive and, you know, moving us towards a better future and all that stuff. Uh, Sometimes it can be something that causes serious severing of relationships and things. So that may be a topic that I I put in a smaller kind of follow-up episode type of thing that I spoke about before, just so like a 20-minute thing, because the main thing I'm going to speak about with politics is more of a overarching theme and things like that. So I'll save that for another time. But today the topic is fear and... um, that's what we're going to talk about. So for the time being, I'm going to draw this, do this box strong because that's, that's what, that's what I'm going to do. And this has the, uh, obviously topics that were added previously. There have been no t- new topics that I've noticed, uh, coming in over the past week for, to be added to the box, but I just added the ones that were submitted last week. So again, those are seasons like the seasons that we have, um, not only just like externally, but also internally, things that we're feeling, things like that, um, expectations, social media, and of course, today's topic, which is fear. So that's not in the box, but the other three are in the box and could be drawn in this moment. The microphone is really close, so I may be je- yelling. I'm sorry about that. Uh, so here, the box is sh- shaken up, not stirred, and the topic that is being drawn is... Oh shit, what? Relationships. We just did dating and relationships, so I guess that was two different topics, dating and relationships. I merged into one, so I'm going to do another topic because I'm not going to repeat that one. Oh, okay. Uh, The next topic is sex. That's always fun. Um, So sex. Yeah, I mean, we all know about that. Um, And you know, I'm not going to get into like the political kind of gender sex route. Which is also a very, very, uh, a very good topic to speak about. But I, uh, I think that's like a topic in itself, and I couldn't possibly fix, uh, mix the both topics in the same hour-long podcast. So sex—that's a lot better than politics. So I'm going to just replace politics with sex, and sex and politics. I mean, I guess they go together. Like peanut butter and jelly. Uh, okay, so sex is the next topic for 
next week. So that should be fun listening. It'll be a nice distraction from all the stuff going on. If, you know, things are, you know, if I don't catch the Rona, uh, anyway, so today fear, uh, it's going on everywhere. Um, and we fear things. I mean, obviously even before this coronavirus went around, there were constantly people that have fears and fear things, you know, outside of that, even now. So, um, you know, you, we can have fear of this contagious virus, or it can be the inexplicable fear of the person that you live with, you know? Um, I, uh, <laughs> for some reason, uh, every time I turned the corner, uh, with my roommate, I would, uh, just yell, like, it was just like the f- instinctual, for some reason, fear reaction. And, and I, uh, I, I promised that when I spoke about this topic that I would bring that up because I have no idea why, why that is. It's something I'm working on. So hopefully the things I cover in this next episode, well, in this episode will give me something to think about with uh, concerns to that. So uh, fear, um, it's defined as an explicable, in, uh, I'm going to start over, fear, <laughs> It's defined as an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain or a threat is or is a threat. And I want to just like emphasize a belief there um, because, you know, a lot of things with fear, like we can have fear of an actual situation, which I mean, I'll speak about in a minute, but there's also this fear that that's kind of this that's created and manifested and you know, blossoming wildly in our head in that, that we're creating because of this belief that we have. And of course, I'm going to go into that a little bit more as well. But if you um, follow the social media pages, you may have seen the post that I posted, the post that I posted about um, a quote from Will Smith and what he stated was, danger is very real, but fear is a choice. And I, I, I love that statement because I think it, it speaks volumes to you know, the essence of, of fear, you know, fear is something that is very normal. It's something that's, uh, that's been ingrained with us. You know, it's, it's, it's part of us, you know, it's programmed in our nervous system. And that's something that just speaks to like how it has helped us to evolve and survive through time. But, um, you know, so, so fear is, is very important for survival, you know, like the people that feared the correct things, like were afraid of the correct things, they lived long enough to keep their genes and, offspring you know obviously going on for generations to come and people that weren't afraid of things they may have fallen off a cliff or gotten bitten by a spider or a snake or something like that and died so these these fears that we have they're very normal and they help us to get through certain uh, dangerous situations but in those situations while we're in those dangerous situations it's not necessarily great to be completely in a panicked fear that entire time because that's not going to help you just like in a fire drill you know like if there's a fire in the place that you're at like it's it's important to have those drills and know like where where to go and stuff like that but it's important in, in those situations not to be panicked not to just freak out because i don't know if any of you watch the office but there's that there's an episode where um you know dwight tries to do a fire drill and like everyone just starts panicking and running like even though there's a fire safety plan like you know in in the face of fear you know like when combined with just like just not really knowing what's going to happen it creates panic and like that panic causes irrational behavior and 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 we put ourselves in a situation that kind of can put us in more danger or more harm's way because of this this way that we're reacting and it's just important to take hold of that like recognize like that danger does exist but but know that like in those situations like keep a hold of yourself and keep calm just enough to like get through that in a reasonable way, like recognize the danger, but don't let that fear cause the panic that's going to surely induce if you don't manage it and maintain it. So, um, there are, there are two different types of fear. There's like this fear that we have like from physically, like we have physical reactions to fear as well as the ones that happen within our own minds, the ones that we can kind of, um, have internally and not really, be seen but there's also the ones that um that are very physical like your hair raising on your arms if you're um you know when that fight or flight response comes in like your hair starts raising on your arms and that's actually it, it's better for animals you know like you see cats or dogs or something that that have their hair raising it's make them look bigger and more intimidating so that's something that we've kind of developed but there's also like physical health issues that start coming from these this 
extended amount of time being in fear like we develop cardiovascular issues like people i mean like can have that have bad hearts i mean this time could be worse for them just for their cardiac health i mean like a lot of people are fearful and i mean like that in itself will cause like a raising of blood pressure and and all of this stuff will inevitably start affecting people like even with healthy hearts but i mean i imagine with people with cardiovascular issues already this is not really the best time if you are kind of in this panic and fear mode um but cardiovascular issues gas gastrointestinal issues um it accelerates the aging process uh weakens the immune system so everyone that's trying to fight this virus and stay healthy but also constantly in fear is not really helping your immune system out and um and it can also just cause premature death but i think most importantly out of this it accelerates aging i mean <laughs> by the end of this, like all these people out of work, like by the time we go back to work, I mean, everyone's going to be filing for retirement or something. It's going to be, you know, it's, it's not healthy for us. It's not healthy for us to continue to kind of be in this excited state of mind for the situation. I mean, like we're being up to date and I keep bringing this back up to this coronavirus because that's something that's obviously on our minds. But this is kind of just in, in many situations that we feel this fear and this uh, overwhelming sense of panic because we don't know what's going on or we're feeding into that feeling that we're having. And um, again, that's that's very normal. You know, like it's it's part of that that system that we have within ourselves, like, like that neural, like our nervous system. And within that, like, of course, we have responses to it. Like I said earlier, the fight or flight response, which causes us to like, kind of be more aware of a situation and know whether or not like, we are going to like, either have to fight through it, or, you know, like run away and like, you know, move ourselves away from it. But in sight of a lot of these different situations, I mean, obviously, if like, you're afraid of heights, and you're getting near a cliff or something, your fire flight response might kick in, and you might back away from that cliff. And um, that's more like a the flight response, obviously, but, um, the fight response would be like, I guess, like someone that's maybe afraid of heights that decides to start rock climbing and like fighting that. And I, I, I mean, that's like, that's not exactly that, but that's like kind of fighting through that fear. A fight response would be like more or less like you're getting mugged and, um, you either have the choice to, you know, throw your items one direction and then run in the opposite direction, which is a perfectly fine strategy but if you're backed into a corner and you feel like you're in imminent danger then that fight response will allow your adrenaline to keep going i mean you will allow your adrenaline to go your body's going to be moving your pupils are going to dilate you're going to be a lot more aware and um you know just focus in that situation so that you can get out of that as safely as possible but what is the point of that such that that kind of intense response where we're releasing releasing cortisol and epinephrine and all these different chemicals that are essentially like shutting off different parts of our body uh bodies functioning like um our digestive system like we may not feel as hungry so now we're getting less nutrition and stuff and i'm thinking about this in this time now where we're not necessarily in imminent danger a lot of us maybe are secluded to our homes or or moving in a way that's uh limited but the immediate danger the the immediate danger doesn't call for us to constantly be in that state. And I'm almost certain an earthquake just happened. Like the entire house just shook. Uh, I'm not really sure about that, but um, I'm not sure if anyone's listening from California, but they may, you may have felt that as well. Um, I'm kind of feeling as though I don't know. I, I doubt that's big enough for like a tsunami or something like that. But that, that was kind of crazy. Um, it's kind of kind of crazy. Um, but anyway, uh, the see, I, I lost my train of thought. It's, it's kind of, of course, everything is just happening. Like when I try to record this podcast, it, it would just be the perfect timing for that to happen. But anyway. Uh, it's not, it's, it doesn't make sense for us to be in this excited state constantly when we're, you know, at home or just with, with our families or in this state, because like our, our body's releasing all these like different hormones and things like that, that's causing us to have these cardiovascular issues, causing us to have these gastrointestinal issues because we're not, we're like putting ourselves as if like we're constantly being mugged. Like imagine being perpetually mugged, like every minute of every day for like, you know, for however long like you're exper like in this fear state of mind or whatever like that's what's happening like your body is releasing those those uh endorphins and those i mean those uh 
those neural neurotoxins and things like that and it's causing your body to react negatively to them so that in itself is just i mean reason enough i believe that you know like for our own physical health for our um mental i mean for our uh immune health for just like the health in general that we have for ourselves like it's it's important that we just keep in mind that fear isn't aiding that and it's actually causing more destruction to those very things that we may be trying to avoid especially in this time like i stated before um but also our mental um our mental situations change i'm sorry i'm still feeling like earthquakes which is just kind of tripping me out and I'm trying to stay normal because, of course, I'm speaking about this topic of fear. But I'm, <laughs> since I moved to California and I'm not too far from the coast, I've had this weird, irrational fear that an earthquake, an earthquake's going to happen, and it's just going to be like a tsunami, and I'm going to have to get to high ground really fast. And like I said, I have to change the alternator in my car, so it's just the, it's just the worst timing for all of this. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to keep my cool and um, just remind myself why fear is not uh, helpful in this situation so anyway uh, mentally uh, fear can also just it, it obviously plagues us and I think this is kind of where it hurts us the most because we can be mentally fearful like just having fear within us and it not necessarily be externally seen you may not be able to see it so like we can live with it longer we can we can be with it longer and it, it and it just like causes more difficulties with within our own mental capacity whether that's just causing more anxiety and uh heightened depression or it can do things like even cause like ptsd you know uh something with ptsd i always thought that you had to directly experience it but to actually get ptsd you can actually you can get it from experiencing it personally from having someone close to you experience it or just witnessing it. And I think in a time now, we can, you know, see movies where we're irrationally afraid of like going swimming in the ocean because a giant shark is going to try to eat us. Or maybe we, we, we see things about people falling off cliffs, or maybe we're seeing a virus, you know, like spread throughout communities. And, and that in itself is causing fear. And, and that induction of that fear and that manifestation of it over time just perpetuates this feeling and causes us to no longer like know that this is something to not be afraid of. It's something that's like within us. And therefore, you know, like now we're stuck with it. Like even after this passes, we're, you know, like people, I even saw a meme about it. It was like, you know, um, your grandchildren asking you about asking you if you want a Corona or something. And then it's just like this face of this person having flashbacks of just like the coronavirus and like empty toilet paper shelves and um, an atomic bomb explosion. It's kind of just ridiculous. But um, at the end of the day, it's like this is something that can cause you to permanently kind of be left with this feeling of anxiety and 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 just discomfort around even just like the thought of it or the sound of it or just remembering it in general. So that in itself is something that's manifested within you. So, I mean, like it's, it's not something to hold on to for that reason alone, again, because it's, it's not something that you really would care to hold on to a fear that you would care to hold on to for the rest of your life. Because again, like once you bring that up, once that comes up again, now all these, you know, harmful toxins are coming in that are, going to cause your body to go into this response that's not necessarily needs to go in and you know just detriment your body's health even more um it can impair your memory and damage certain parts of your brain causing you to have a lot more difficulty in regulating your fear because of the damaging in the amygdala which is part which is part of the brain which is damaged during this time that you're kind of in this constant fear mode so now you're just having difficulty in regulating fear. So this is something that I think about when I think of agoraphobia. It's the fear of open spaces. There are a lot of times that agoraphobia is something that comes from excessive social phobias where you have a negative social uh, social interaction that causes you to be fearful of maybe that particular social situation, let's say um, fearful of bars and something because you had some kind of event that happened that now made you fearful of that. So now that escalates to being fearful of any type of 
open environment, any type of uh, public environment. And then that fe- that fear kind of keeps escalating until you're in your house and fearful of leaving your room or even leaving, you know, like the house in general. So, um, you know, that, that fear definitely starts to escalate itself. And, and now you're going through different situations, unable to truly regulate when you should be fearful, when you shouldn't be fearful. And maybe that leads to you just, you know, being afraid of, you know, people that are in your life, like someone that lives with you, you know, so uh, maybe that's something that happens. I, I'm not regulating my fear properly when it comes to being afraid of my roommate. Um, I don't know. But anyway, uh, so mentally, not only is it uh, just causing these uh, this impairment of memory, but it's also like just damaging certain parts of your brain that um, are going to just impact the way that you regulate fear, the way that you start thinking about certain things, the way that you're making certain decisions. And this, I mean, and again, in these times when we're facing certain fears or needing to regulate in an, a, a situation in a meaningful way, how do we do that when we're in this place of not being able to make proper decisions, always being distracted because we're in our head over some anxiety or over this this fear over something that's not necessarily present with us right there in that moment. And and that's something that we have to take note of is that like not only are we dealing with things mentally, but how how present are we in our actual environment? Like how how much are we able to attend to the things that we need to attend to if we're unable to properly make those decisions because we're so wound up in in our own fear and it it wears us down it makes people tired and it 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 just intensifies these things that are already present within our environment where there's so much anxiety and depression that's that's so prevalent in in our day-to-day lives that having these things are um having this constant fear just will extremely just intensify the um the depression and anxiety that we feel i'm sorry i'm like extremely distracted because there's there's a guy now yelling across the street i don't know what he's yelling out or who he's yelling at but he's he's pretty angry and i can hear it and i'm sorry there's just all these things happening it's like no one knows i'm podcasting but ah anyway uh the point is that none of it's good it's it's not good and i can keep speaking of of the the things that happen within our bodies, things that go on within our minds, things that happen within, like, obviously physically within our bodies that induce fear, that that happen because of fear. But that's not the point. It's like, you know, we have fear, we know what fear is, and, and a lot of times it's just about regulating that and moving to a place where we're no longer stuck in that, that state of being constantly fearful. And, and that's kind of what I want to focus on is is not in this time of just reminding people and lecturing people on what fear is, but kind of how to move ourselves outside of that that state of fear, how to how to how to get away from it, even if it's for just a moment, like a moment, because it's, again, not only good for your physical health, but also for your mental health, like just holding on to that is just like carrying a weight that you don't necessarily need to always carry and it will wear on you. So so there are some ways that, you know, like we can work out and work through our different fears and of course maybe you have methods of your own of things that have worked in the past and of course use those and they're really amazing and I have ones of my own but there are just a few that um you know obviously I'd I'd like to share to help hopefully in some kind of way or just like help to recognize the ways in which fear may be impacting you and the ways that you can move through it obviously but um a big way that I I feel is we can change the way that we fear things or the way that we feel about things or um, the way that we react to things by imagining ourselves kind of being in that, uh, being in a different state of mind, kind of not necessarily like ignoring the fact that we're fearful, but more or less focusing on this idea of being more courageous, like this, this opposite aspect, being unfearful, if you will, where you're not necessarily ignoring the fact that you're afraid of something, but it's kind of like, that's, it's kind of like a, you know, if you're walking in a, in a city at night or something like that, or walking through the woods at night, like a normal person does. And, uh, you, you know, like you get overcome with fear. Maybe you feel like someone's watching you or, you know, like something crazy is going to happen because you watch too many horror movies, you know, kind of something that I've done in the past is just kind of visualizing myself as like being like, 
kind of that person that like, oh yeah, like you want to attack me? Like you should be afraid of me kind of thing, you know, like kind of psyching myself up in that way where it's like, I'm no longer putting myself in that victim state of mind. I'm no longer putting myself in that, um, that fearful state of mind because I'm en encouraging myself and, and securing myself mentally by just mentally trying to move myself to a place where it's like, okay, I have security in this situation. I have comfort in this situation. I, you know, just visualizing that idea of not being afraid and not being afraid of whatever that situation is. So it's going to look different, obviously, in a situation where maybe you're walking through the woods versus what's going on now. But um, it's just still that idea of like, you know, recognizing what's what's happening to you and then visualizing that very opposite thing because you know that's how it is and i love this analogy where it's like you don't in a dark room you don't try to fight away the light you just open up the blinds and allow the light to come in so you're not necessarily fighting away from that negative thing you're merely just allowing this other thing to come in and like overshadow or overwhelm or uh move into this other space that that kind of like breaks it apart eventually and and um brings new light to the situation um so that that's just that's just one idea that you can try another thing is just confronting it and and that's something i brought up before where it's like that awareness and i brought up in the last episode in the episode before about you if you dig deeper and you realize the core of what is causing you fear and i obviously like again there are things happening now that's very obvious but there are other things that we hold on to even outside of this um coronavirus that we are fearful of and, and we don't really know why we have reaction to them sometimes we have panic attacks sometimes we have just inexplicable times where we just have a fear and and it's not until we recognize that like what is this fear that we can actually have some power over it. And then once we have like the idea of it, because once you recognize it, it's not going to make it go away. Now you're just going to say, Oh shit, like I'm afraid of this. And what do I do now? It's about confronting it. Now it's, it can be very difficult to confront a fear because you're obviously fearful of it, but that confrontation of it, that, that recognition of it being there in, in the way that you work through it, allows it to lose its power it causes it to lose its power where it's like it's no longer this thing that's under the shadows that's like kind of like vibrating the ground so to speak under you it's it's more or less something that you can see you can feel you can you can move away but it may be uh, challenging to move away from it but it loses its power as you work with it as you confront it as you as you move towards it instead of constantly moving away from it um like i spoke about earlier where it's like we put ourselves in this fight or flight response when we're not necessarily needing to, especially this time where we're speaking about a virus and we're kind of at home safe with our families and we have enough food and toilet paper and everything like that. And, uh, you know, we're putting ourselves in that, that fight or flight response when we don't necessarily have to. So when you're fearful in certain ways, like also look around you, what's actually happening? Like, are you in a place where you're in imminent danger? Like, are you, I mean, if you're working in like, an ICU ward where it's like coronavirus victims are like coming in every single day or something like that, then yeah, like maybe you have more of a reason to be fearful. But if you're in that position, I'm sure you're a, uh, you know, competent medical person that has seen a lot of diseases and a lot of infectious things that can get you killed in, in other times. So I'm sure you're handling it responsibly or whatever. But um, the point is that, you know, Many of us aren't in that situation. Many of us, again, are quarantined at home or doing very minimal socializing and, and traveling about. So look around yourself and, and ask yourself, what are you actually experiencing? Are you perceiving something that isn't necessarily there? You know, like, and that's just rationalizing the the imminent danger that you're in. And, and that's kind of goes back to that quote, like, danger is real, but fear is, is a choice, you know? And, um, that's something that we have to decipher within ourselves because we can't decipher it again if we're just constantly in this state of feeling it. So just stop for a second, look around your environment. Um, are your kids laughing? Are you, you know, is Netflix streaming one of your favorite shows or, you know, like, or, you know, like, are you safe? Are you eating something? Like what, what's actually happening within your immediate environment? Are you in immediate danger? Like, should you feel that fear in that moment? in that time right there. I mean, now if you 
have to make a mission to the grocery store or something and you're like oh man there's going to be a lot of people there coughing and sneezing because there always are people coughing and sneezing there uh then maybe okay that fear kind of spikes up but then in that moment you also just like take according like according act accordingly I can't even find my words to say. Then you just act accordingly and maybe you bring some hand sanitizer with you. Maybe you um, just consciously try not to touch your face. That's something that I have a problem with and I've been kind of doing better with it in this time where it's like, obviously we have to be more mindful of it, but it can also just be like an experiment in that way where it's like you're improving how often you touch your face, which is, you know, not really that great. But, um, you know, obviously if the situation demands it, then then obviously you can start feeling a certain way. But if it doesn't suit you, if it doesn't please you, if, if it doesn't do anything good for you and you know that's doing all these negative things for you as far as like internally and mentally, then, you know, like move towards changing that. But first it's recognition of like how much danger are you actually in? Like how much fear should you actually have? Like if you're afraid of heights and you're sitting on your couch and you're just watching a movie about like someone rock climbing, like that's, I mean, some people are fearful of that and I, I don't want to like make that a joke or anything, but um, that's kind of like part of something I think is like immersion therapy or something like that, where it's like you slowly implement these things to people that are fearful of things. So if they're afraid of spiders, then maybe you show them a picture of a spider, you know, it's like something that's not like out of the page and maybe you bring out, uh, you know, a stuffed teddy bear of a spider that's obviously not lifelike and then a more lifelike one and, you know, kind of escalate to that point. But the thing is, it's, it's, uh, I got off topic. The point is uh, perspective. And if, yeah, if you're not in immediate danger, if you're not in an immediate situation where you need to be fearful, then, you know, take that into account and try to, like, do things to, you know, rationalize with yourself to, to bring yourself back to a state where you're okay. You know, you're not constantly heart racing, heart beating, blood flowing, thing like that. Um, anyway, um, uh, another thing that I, I'll keep bringing up and I will keep bringing up is the aspect of talking, you know, speaking about it to people that are around you, speaking about it to friends and family and loved ones. And, and, you know, cause especially in now in these moments now where we're kind of dealing with a very similar situation, a lot of people are fearful. A lot of people are doing things. And I mean, fear comes in different states. A lot of people will cower in fear. Some people will, will laugh when they're afraid of something. And there are a lot of memes that come up that are kind of, they're funny in a way, but they're also like kind of dark in some ways where it's like, you know, it's kind of like making fun of the fears that people are having about this very real situation. So talking it out, talking it with people that are, you know, in the situation, I think that now it really can be a time. And there was a, um, uh, a video that came up of Matthew McConaughey, which was kind of uh, crazy that it came up, but he was basically speaking about um, this aspect of fear and how um, a lot of times it's, you know, I'm I'm completely losing track of where I was going with that. Um, oh yeah, he was speaking about this aspect of how this virus can be something that starts bringing us together and unites us and in, 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 a, in a way that we haven't been united in a very long time. And I think that's something that is very critical, but it starts with us having those conversations. It starts with us kind of uniting in that front of, um, although like we're not actually uniting hand in hand necessarily, but uh, I think we can unite in the same, uh, in that mental capacity, in that way of, you know, like we're all humans, we're all dealing with this, we're all um, fearful or not fearful in different ways. And the people that aren't afraid, you know, like, help those out that are afraid, you know, like talk to those and, and help them to calm them down. Don't necessarily, um, devalue their experience of fear because I mean, like it's, everyone has the right and, and the very real, you know, valid reason to be fearful, but the amount of fear and, and the way that allows us to move or not move within our environment, that's kind of when it becomes detrimental. And, and I mean, like with anything, it's like, it's, it's not a problem until it's a problem. And a lot of times people like people are handicapped by these, these fears and, and plagued by them constantly that they can't move outside of it and can't enjoy parts of life, you know, enjoy life. It's meant to be enjoyed. And we, we can't do that if we're constantly in that state of fear. So we, we have to really work with each other and help each other out in this time where um, so many people are confused and worried and unsure about what's going to happen next. So have those conversations with others and, and, and share that, sharing that experience. And not only are you, uh, should you have those conversations with others to encourage them and help them and build them up and, and, 
provide security but also that dialogue within yourself like how much how much dialogue are you putting towards yourself that's positive i mean like there's so much news and so many things that are negative that that are being placed inside of inside of your head obviously but uh how much of that are you just validating versus how much of it are you kind of facing with positivity how much of it are you saying like um securing yourself in the knowledge that you wash your hands regularly that you take good care of yourself that you're at home safe securing yourself in this positive mentality where it's like you are no longer in 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 the face of that fear and constantly kind of worried about it and i I apologize for keep on keep using this example of the virus, but it's obviously something that's very um, present in our environment. But that positive kind of mindset goes into again like all of all the different fears that we can face, whether it's a social fear or a fear of heights or a fear of spiders. It's it's really that dialogue of positivity. Like how how much is it meaningful for you to maybe you have to travel to go see a loved one and you're afraid of flying and you know, like, it's like, how much is that meaningful for you? So like, you know, speak to yourself positively, say like, you know, I, you know, I love my family, I I know that, you know, like, they love me, and they wouldn't want me to kind of do this if they felt as though it wasn't good for me. I, you know, think that this would be a great step in moving forward, you know, just like, kind of reshaping that, that dialogue within yourself to support the things that you want to do. And, And I don't think anyone wants to be afraid. I don't think anyone wants to be diminished or handicapped in a way by their own fears and I think that that's something that we very much fall into when we kind of feed into these things and I'm gonna uh, try to just like go by the next few pretty fast because time and stuff um but the main thing uh but another thing is uh, acceptance of it, it that it's a thing that it's uh that fear is happening that fear is very much part of us and I think that goes into that part of us having that dialogue with others but also that dialogue within ourselves like knowing that it's okay like, uh, it's okay to be fearful, like, the, the fear that you're having isn't wrong, and although, like, you may be combative with people that maybe aren't afraid, or maybe aren't saying that they're afraid, and, or using, or diverting their fear into, like, anger, or something, or whatever it is, but, um, either way, like, there's, there's no one that can invalidate, like, your feeling, you know, but it's more or less, what are you doing about it, you know, like, are you, working towards doing something different are you working towards moving outside of that fear or are you just recognizing it and I think that that's kind of um where you kind of have to realize where you're at you like accept that it's a thing that you're experiencing it and and recognize where you're at and and the form of the awareness of it or moving towards the place that you want to be in relation to it so um but that that acceptance of it being a thing is just like it's validating your experience and it's causing you not to worry about being fearful to others because there are so many times where we can be afraid of something or uncertain about something and when someone asks us are you okay like is this something that's okay we are ready to tell them oh yeah it's fine even though we're really anxious about it even though we're really fearful about it even though we have some reservations about it so accept that thing know that like it's it's okay to feel that way but also recognize like is this something that you want for yourself and and that's something that the question that always has to come back to yourself is like do you want this for yourself and a lot of times we don't we have these negative experiences or we describe these things as negative experiences because they are just that you know like we wouldn't recognize that they're negative if it wasn't something that we didn't want you know so it's like we have to move towards the things that we do want but it's about that recognition and the overall the acceptance of you know just the things that we're feeling in order to move forward um um and and just also know that like again that fear looks different for everyone we again like some of us may hold it inside some of us may uh transform that fear into anger some may transform that fear into comedy some may move in different ways but um fear is prevalent within us and it's it's important for us to recognize how we deal with it because a lot of times like we kind of deal with fearful situations in um, kind of a systematic way where it's like a lot of times we can, maybe let's let's say it's a social situation that we constantly confront, get confronted with this kind of question or um, this idea or this conversation and, and we have to navigate through it. And maybe it's one that like causes a, a fearful response, but people joke about it. People will make a joke out of it or not really 
answer the question that's kind of been their pattern of how they get through that so now in every every situation when they're asked about how they're feeling or they're asked about you know like something deeper it's it's going to be used like this this joking manner or this anger or wh- however it is that they've used it in the past that's going to be brought back up so in these times now people experience fear in different ways it's it's good to recognize that and it's good to also just acknowledge that maybe some people that are joking about it or the people that are angry about it maybe they need their own space in order to deal with it and and it's not necessarily in of our jobs to tell someone else to not be afraid or tell someone else they should be more afraid and uh you know it's it's it kind of just causes more confusion and and more of a feeling of not being able to share these things that we're going through within us and and i think that that's something that's um not necessarily productive for us as people or just personally and um yeah you basically just have to do what's right for you and i i think i'm just gonna kind of leave it there because um that's always what it comes down to do what's right with you and and at the end of all it, it all it's like it comes down to your safety and the people that you love and care about and and we have to move accordingly in these times and in the times when, you know, like we're not in a global pandemic, but in the times when we're just dealing with day-to-day life, day-to-day things that, that may cause us fear and limit us from living a life that is happier and more fulfilled and, and more loving because of this, this thing that we're constantly holding on to. So do this right for you and, and the people that you care about and, and everything else will kind of just fall into place, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna again leave it there. But um, so yeah, some personal techniques I had for um, for doing conquering fears, and again, like I said with the forest example, kind of pretending that you know I'm the one that you know like you need to be afraid of in that way. But uh, also, I've I've had some friends come up, uh, just like it was like two friends like within a week that were saying that they were afraid of cops, like like just like really fearful of you know cops. And, you know, like their heart would start racing and stuff like that. And I realized when I had first moved into this town, like about five, six years ago, I I was also like very fearful of cops. And I I don't know if it was just because I saw more than than where I lived before or wherever it was. But um, I realized it was like it was causing my heart to race and like I wouldn't I wouldn't be doing anything wrong. And it's like, you know, I'd be doing the speed limit. And every time I just saw one, it would make my heart race. And I uh I realized I didn't like it because, you know, like there were songs that were playing that were like my favorite songs and I missed the entire song because not only did I pass the cop and like my heart starts beating, but now I'm like after and thinking about it and like making sure like I'm going the speed limit and things like that. And it was just like, it was not very useful. It wasn't very productive for me to continue to stay in that mindset. So I, I actively moved towards kind of going away from that. And something I did for that was I kind of just sang the song that was playing on the radio or that was playing for my phone or whatever it was. And, and that in itself, like while I saw the cop, like, and as I was driving by, I would just kind of have to keep singing that song and like stay focused on it because that, you know, like in that, in those moments when I would be fearful, like my, all of my attention would go towards like the, you know, the, the cop and like whatever it was that like made me fearful of that situation. But as you move your mindset away from just like that topic in itself, then like the rest of your body will start to follow. So my body just started like calming itself down. Like I, it was actually a few months ago that like, I finally realized I was driving by a cop and I had no reaction whatsoever. So it was, um, something in, in that escalated further where it's like, now I, you know, don't necessarily have to sing a song or anything like that, but it's, uh, you know, that's just one of my other techniques for, for that. And, uh, yeah, you know, I, I think that everyone has their own techniques. So share some of yours if you like. Um, you can email them or post them on the social media pages or whatever you whatever you want. Uh, something else I thought about was um, just kind of listing some of the most common phobias, just so some of us don't feel so bad. And, and surprisingly, the coronavirus has not made the list of the top 10 viruses. I mean, top 10 most common phobias as of today. So... Uh, the list is social phobias, uh, most common, obviously. Agoraphobia, like I spoke about earlier, and that's a fear of open spaces. Acrophobia, fear of heights. Teromerhanophobia. Teromerhanophobia. 
and that's fear of flying. You know, I feel like some of these are made up just to make me sound bad on my podcast, but, uh, anyway, uh, claustrophobia, fear of enclosed spaces, entomophobia, fear of insects, ophido, ophidiophobia, ophidiophobia, and this fear of snakes, cynophobia, this fear of dogs, astrophobia, I thought that was fear of asteroids, but it's actually fear of storms, and, uh, Trip, trypanophobia, trypanophobia, and that's fear of needles, trypanophobia. You know, some of these are just kind of crazy. So, I uh, I get the reason why we just say I'm afraid of needles or I'm afraid of flying because, yeah. Uh, so that's that. Uh, hope you all stay safe, stay healthy, wash your hands, limit public contact. A lot of people may be scared in this time, but at the end of the day, like uh limiting these social interactions allows you to be home with your family more, you know, catch up on some binge watching, uh, you know, enjoying, you know, life as, as you, as much as you can, I guess. And, and, you know, and of course just proceed with caution, you know, wash your hands, carry around hand sanitizer, just be responsible and healthy and, and we'll make it through. And I think that's kind of the most important thing to remember as we, kind of have a lot of fears and worries surrounding this so anyway uh hope you all stay safe i will now tell you to rate review subscribe and uh and tell you about the uh social media pages which is the facebook page you can join everything under the sun facebook page or you can join instagram with at everything.sunpodcast i mean or every every sun podcast and Twitter at everything.sunpodcast. And email everything.sunpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, yeah, so you can send in topic ideas if you want to. Again, the next topic for next week is going to be sex, so that's going to be real fun. Uh, yeah, uh, rate, review, subscribe. I said that already. Stay healthy and don't infect anyone if you're sick. So love you all, and I will talk to you next time.